What is up you guys? So in this one, we're going to talk about multi-channel and multi-dimensional signals. What are they? How to do the distinction between those two types of signals. We're going to give many examples so that we could easily look at any type of signal and directly say, is it multi-channel or one channel? Is it multi-dimensional or one dimensional or is it a combination of both so without further ado let's get started now you have to keep in mind that in signal processing it's really important to know what type of signal you're processing right so is the signal that i'm processing is it multi-channel or multi-dimensional or both so as we explained in the previous lecture, a signal is described by a function of one or more independent variables. The value of the function can be a real valued scalar quantity, a complex valued quantity, or perhaps even a vector. For example, the signal x1 of t, that is, let's say, a cosine 2 pi of t is a real valued signal. However, the signal x2 of t, that is, say, a exponential j 3 pi of t times t, where j is the imaginary number, that is, j squared is minus 1. This guy, in, exp in complex exponential form that also could be expressed in algebraic form as a cosine the exponent that is 3 pi t plus j a sine the exponent 3 pi t the signal is clearly complex valued it returns a value in the complex field right okay in some applications signals are generated by multiple sources or multiple sensors such signals in turn can be represented in vector form so for example here we have three components of a vector measured over time so each signal that you see is an entry of the vector right and what you see in front of you represents the ground acceleration due to an earthquake, ground waves. Okay, so the thing to bear in mind here is that in many applications you might and definitely will have multiple sensors measuring the incoming signal. Okay, and in that case it will turn out to be very convenient to express your signal as a vector. So for example, I go ahead and say my x3 of t is a vector. So I place a bar beneath x3. Usually in books you see that x3 is denoted in bold face. But in my case, I can't bold my x3. So I'll place a bar underneath. So this x3 is a vector containing three components. Actually, let's get rid of the three. So my x of t vector contains three components, x1 scalar, x2 scalar, and x3 scalar, right? So these vectors are usually referred to as, okay, they're a vector of signals, but in signal processing, we call them multi-channel signals because the signal is measured across multiple channels. In this case, channel one, channel two, and channel three. Now, other applications where multi-channel signals shows up is in ECG. So for example, in ECG, you've got three lead and 12 lead electrocardiograms, which are often used in practice. This will lead you to respectively three channel and 12 channel signals. Now, let's do the classification okay if the signal is a function of a single independent variable the signal is called one dimensional okay so 
like x1 and of t and x2 of t, those signals are one dimensional. On the other hand, a signal is m dimensional if its value is a function of m independent variables. For example, if I go ahead and grab x4 of t and maybe, I don't know, y, that is cosine y plus exponential of t. This signal is two dimensional, right? Because it's a function of y and t. And we showed in the previous lecture examples about two dimensional signals, such as images. Images are easily regarded as two dimensional signals. Now, this is how you classify multi-dimensional signals. So 1D are signals that are function of one independent variable, such as x1 of t and x2 of t in the examples we gave, right? 2D is my signal over here, x4 of t and y, right? And so on till m dimensional. So m dimensional will probably look something like this x of i don't know maybe t1 t2 down to t m right a function of m independent variables now on the other hand when we talk about multi channels it's always good to keep in mind images when talking about multi channels why well the picture shown in front of you is an example of a two dimensional signal okay it's multi dimensional since the intensity or brightness at each point. So in this case, it's the vector, it's the matrix X, that is a matrix of intensities, okay? And it solely depends on two independent variables, X and Y. So for each point of the image, we've got an intensity, right? Now, on the other hand, an image could be represented if you're talking about videos, right? If we are doing some TV broadcasting, then you've got a series of images. And thus, you would rather say I've got a matrix of intensities, right? Followed by the spatial coordinates X, Y, and T, where at each T I've got a new image, right? So not only X and Y are changing in videos, but also T. So when you talk about videos, you've got, you're in a three dimensional space. And not just that, not just that. If we're talking about colored videos in contrast to black and white TVs, when you're talking about colored TVs, you've got three channels. So this is not only multi-dimensional, but also multi-channel because you've got the R channel, the G channel, and the B channel. So you've got red. We know that an image is a linear combination of three basic colors the red, the green, and the blue, right? So this signal that is a video, right, is three-dimensional and contains three channels, right? Um, so yeah, when talking about multi-channel signals, it depends on the number of signals inside your vector. So signal X of T may be a vector, X of T or X of T1, T2 could be also multidimensional as well. It's not that a signal is multidimensional or multi-channel. It could be a combination of both. So we say that my signal contains M channels if it could be expressed as a vector of M signals. X1 of T, X2 of T down to X, M of T, right? So each entry of this vector is a channel, right? Like in the case of a video signal, each component is a channel indicating the color within the image, right? In these lectures, we will mainly focus on one channel and one dimensional real or complex valued signals. And we will simply refer to them as a signal, okay? In mathematical terms, these signals are described by a function of a single independent variable. Although independent variables need not be time, they could be space or whatsoever, it is common practice to, by default, that any signal to be seen as a function of t. So even though the signal could be a function of x and y, but by default in all books, you will usually find that 
when talking about a generic signal, the independent variable is T. Now, in many cases, the signal processing operations and algorithms developed for one-dimensional single channels can be easily extended to multi-channel and multi-dimensional signals. And that is mainly why in these lectures we're going to focus on one-dimensional and a one-channel signal. Okay, could be real, could be complex, but keep in mind that when going to multi-dimensional or multi-channel signals, you will most probably and definitely will rely on stuff that you learned from one-dimensional, one-channel signal processing algorithms. Okay, right. So in this lecture, we saw multi-channel or multi-dimensional. We gave extensive examples on different types of signals that could be classified as 1D, 2D, 3D, or even single and multi-channeled ones. We also saw a combination of both, that is the case of videos, which could be easily expressed as a signal that contains three channels, R, G, and B, and three dimensions, because it's a signal seen as a function of space, x, y, that's two variables, and t, which is time, because you've got an image flashing out at each instance, right? So thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below, and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also, please consider donating to my Patreon account any amount you wish. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in future lectures.